Hello everybody, welcome back to Business English Class. I hope you have enjoyed your tea and your coffee and maybe you had a biscuit or two. So this is section two of today's lesson and it is responding to calls. So this is what you do if you are answering a phone call, whereas in the first part of the class you were making the phone calls. Now we're going to answer the phone calls. So let's have a look. Tips for answering the phone. Open and read the tips on page 34 and fill in the spaces with the words in the box. This is page 34. These are the words and these are the spaces. You can pause the video here while you complete the exercise. Tips for answering the telephone. Open the answering the telephone document. Read the tips for answering a telephone call. Read the telephone responses on page 2 and suggest more formal language for the responses. Then, read the answers on page 3. This is that doc document. So, these are some tips. And these are the telephone responses, but these are quite informal. So, can you think maybe of a more formal way to say them? And then, on page 3 of that document, there are the answers. So, you can pause this video here while you complete that exercise. That brings us on to the next portfolio or the next exam question. And this is asking for clarification. So, what is clarification? Well, clarification is when you have a good pair of glasses, as you can see from this picture. <laughs> clarification is when something is clear to you or that you understand something better. So, asking for clarification. Watch the clip from Friends. Chandler phones Monica, but she doesn't understand him. Why is there a misunderstanding? Well, you can click on the link that I have provided with the lesson in the instructions section and you can watch the video. You can pause this video here while you do that. Okay, so now you have watched the video. Well, Monica doesn't understand Chandler because he isn't speaking clearly. If you have a misunderstanding on the phone, how can you ask for clarification? Well, the first step is to express a lack of understanding. Tell the person that you are not sure that you have understood them fully. Here are a few useful phrases that you can use. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure that I understand. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure that I know what you mean. Sorry, but I don't quite follow you. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure that I understand what you mean by... Sorry, but I don't quite follow what you're saying about... Okay. You can ask for clarification. Could you say it in another way? Can you clarify that for me? Could you rephrase that? When you say, do you mean... Or you may simply need more information or a helpful example. In such situations, the following are useful. Could you be more specific? Can you give me an example? Could you elaborate on that? Could you elaborate on that is used in more formal situations, such as in the workplace. And then finally, you can confirm your understanding. So let me see if I understood you correctly. If I understand you correctly, so what you're saying is that, or so in other words. Lastly, you can offer thanks and you can clarify your ideal ideas. I got it. Thank you. Oh, I see. Thank you for clarifying. Oh, now I understand. Thanks a lot. Or clarify your ideas. In other words, let me clarify that. Or to put it another way. So, language for clarification. Open the how to ask for clarification document. Read the examples of language used to help you ask for clarification. With a friend or a partner, role play the practice situations on page four. So this is the first page of that document on the left, and this is the second page of that document on the right. 
Now, if we were in class, I would be putting you guys into pairs and you would be completing the practice situations in pairs. But unfortunately, we're not in class. So if you have a housemate or a friend, or even if you just want to practice in front of the mirror uh, with your hairbrush, <laughs> uh, you can practice situations one, two, or three. And you can pause this video here while you complete that. But I am just going to move on. So over to you. Open and read page 45. What does Jane ask the caller to repeat? What language does she use to do this? This is that document. You can pause the video here while you read the document and while you answer these questions. What does Jane ask the caller to repeat? And what language does she use to do this? Well, Jane asks the caller to repeat the address. And what language does she use? Well, she uses formal language. She uses, would you mind repeating? And again, that's an example of softening or hedging that we talked about last week. Okay, and guys, this brings us on to the portfolio or the exam question. So open the National Pen QQI pages 3 and page 4 document. And using page 45 and the How to Ask for Clarification document, complete call 5. Write a telephone conversation where the caller does not speak clearly. Ask for clarification in a polite way. And this is that document and this is call five, asking for clarification. Take part in a telephone conversation where the caller does not speak clearly throughout the call. Ask for clarification in a polite way. Use formal language, but the caller can use informal language if you would like. So guys, again, write the conversation, send it to me and I will put it into your portfolios for assessment. You can pause this video here while you complete that exercise. But I'm just going to move on. So the last thing, guys, that we're going to talk about today is giving directions. Now, I'm sure we're all very familiar with being lost and having to ask for directions. But how are our giving directions in English? So let's review some direction vocabulary. So open the matching directions document. Review the directions by matching the words to their meanings. And this is that document. So you can pause the video here while you complete that. But I'm going to move on and give you the answers. So these are the answers for that document. 1E, 2H, 3J, 4A, 5b, 6d, 7i, 8c, 9f and 10g. You can pause the video here while you correct it. Okay, so open and read page 43. Practice giving directions from a specific place on the map. This is the portfolio or the exam question. Open National Pen, QQI, pages 3 and pages 4. Using page 43 and the directions matching document, complete call 4. Write a telephone conversation where one caller gives directions to the other. Use the map on page 43 and use informal language. And this is that question. Call 4, give directions. In Paris, take part in the telephone conversation whereby one gives directions to another. Please use a map to be included in the portfolio. Use informal language. The map that we will use is the map on page 43. So download page 43 and use that map to write the conversation. Write the conversation, save it and email it to me and I will print it off and put it into your portfolio. So guys, just to recap, 
Today we have five writing activities that we have done. We initiated a business call, so we requested to speak to another person, we left a voicemail message, and we asked for information. Then we responded to a phone call, we asked for clarification, and we gave directions. So today, guys, you have written five conversations. You will email them to me. I will correct them and I will put them into your portfolio. Yes, we will record the conversations, but we won't record them now. Today, we are just going to write them and we will record them, hopefully, if we return to class when that happens. Okay, but for now, just concentrate on writing the documents. Okay, so that brings us on to our plenary exercise. So, name two new things that you learned today. Okay, guys, thank you all very much for listening and thank you for completing the lesson today. If you have any questions, please email me and please email me your homework. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Bye.